It didn't suck. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Episode 4 of Season 15. First episode directed by Jensen Ackles in quite some time. In fact, this is actually, I would say, the best episode he's ever directed. And that's including Weekend at Bobby's. This episode's actually pretty decent, guys. There's great dialogue. There's some pretty good story elements into the episode to the point where I almost didn't guess what was going to happen. The editing in some places, I'll admit straight off, is horrible. There's a lot of that colorized really quick snap edits which is just place mark of terrible terrible horror movies but that honestly is the worst part of this whole episode and it actually starts to mold the chuck villain aspect to a point where i can almost get on board with it you know that's what you need to do to develop a villain actually develop him rather than just throw him in and expect people to just accept it this is actual character development actual character building oh my god i've missed this so much in this show the episode starts off admittedly with a pretty big uh, MacGuffin where this is actually pretty well directed fight sequence. It's a pretty cool sort of attack on the bunker, which is what I was hoping was going to happen. Just all of a sudden when Benny is there for no reason, this is either alternate world or this is a dream. And then Sam is there being addicted to demon blood and he snaps Dean's neck and then it turns out to be a dream. What that actually means. I'm actually kind of curious because it sounds like they're going to just take that whole brother versus brother element that was predicted in season five and they're going to make that something. Andrew Dabb is no creativity. That was a cool sequence nonetheless. Admittedly, it meant nothing for now. At least it was well shot and the action was actually pretty well good. It's the best action this show has shot in a long time, which I'll give them credit. It was actually really well shot. Then we have this story of these high school girls being killed by... A vampire and the vampire turns out to be a high school student and the parents are the ones who are willing to sacrifice their livelihoods for their son admittedly though there's a big kind of hole there because one you have absolutely no idea how the kid became a vampire they don't bother to address that at all and two the vampires aren't allergic to the sun but they hate the sun which I know because I had just watched Dead Man's Blood. The fact that this kid's been going to school his whole life kind of just like throws that mythos out. So there's some retconning once again for Supernatural, which we're just, I'm so goddamn used to now. The element with the kid and actually how it ends with his story, how the brothers take him out and they kill him. I actually liked how that was edited. I liked how that was shot and I liked how that was put together. That was actually a pretty well put together sequence. And then God forbid, the brothers actually talk to each other about their problems. Admittedly, it's the exact same goddamn conversation that we've seen for the last 15 seasons, but it actually wasn't bad. There was some elements that of them just being natural with each other, being actual human beings and really understanding the points of their internal strife and their internal struggles. And then there was Chuck with Becky, which they brought her back. Her elements and seeing Chuck become this person who's masterminding his story. The looks that he gives Becky are cold. Robert Benedict has never been convincing to me as any sort of villainous character, even when he did his whole portrayal thing at the end of season 14. I thought it was a joke. This is the first time that I'm like, okay, I think I can get on board with it. The kind of the cliffhanger, the idea that they might have an idea of what's going to happen is pretty cool. I doubt that they do because Andrew Dabbs never had an idea of what he's going to do. So the directing in this episode was done very well by Jensen. If Jensen does take of this, pushes it a little bit more, he could go into directing. Like, not just Supernatural episodes, but like, go on and direct other movies and whatnot. So despite the retconning, the kind of silly points here and there, and the pointless for now dream, this is the best constructed episode of Supernatural in seasons. Honestly, this is the best episode I've seen in a while. I'm actually just so impressed at how well put together this episode was considering the amount of garbage we have had for the last years, the several years. I'm going to give this episode a 5 out of 7. That is, wow, I never thought I'd give this season anything in the realm of that. When I gave, I think, the last episode a 4, I, I thought that was being incredibly generous. This one's a little bit of a generous 5, admittedly, as well, but... The fact that it wasn't garbage just 
Wow. Anyways, guys, hope you liked this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. I just finished reviewing every single episode of Season 1, and I'm going to be continuing on with Season 2 very soon. So I'm going to leave a playlist for all my Supernatural reviews at the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.